Markets and his new book on emerging markets. So please do sign up if you'd like to attend. Now, on to the main event of the day, and uh, Kun Pavan, who's here to join us. He was with us last year, and people enjoyed the lunch so much that we thought we'd bring him back. He's here to talk about toxins homecoming, yes or no. And the one quote I think I heard from him earlier was, he's coming. So I guess we'll find out what the keys are to Thailand and, and where it's all headed. Um, Kun Pavin is an academic at Kyoto University. He spent nine years in Singapore previously and studied at SOAS in London. Kun Pavin. Well, uh, thank you so much uh, for coming. Uh, it's just like coming home. In fact, this is my third time here, and I enjoyed so much last time. And it's proof that uh, you know I'm I'm still survive. I have not been arrested since my last talk. So uh, hopefully, I will survive again this time. Even though I'm not so sure now. <laughs> right. Uh, today's topic is about uh, toxin. You know, uh, I'm not a fan of toxin. I must say, uh, but I do not hate him. So. <laughs> He might send uh, his representative, you know, um, I mean, that person might be among us, so please convey this message that I still, you know, uh, look up to him. <laughs> well, okay, now toxins are homecoming, yes, no, so what, right? Uh, okay, uh, well, I mean, it has been, it has made a, made a headline in, in Thailand, uh, uh, welcome home, and this is kind of like a, a joke, you know, for, for the Thai reader that, the only way that he could come home and save is for him to immediately enter into a monkhood. So uh, then he might be safe, and then you know uh, someone might not want to, uh, might not be able to assassinate him. But I don't think it's true. E everything can happen in Thailand, okay? Whether you monk or not, uh, is 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 uh, is a norm there. Well, at the beginning of this of this month. Uh, Thailand politics once again uh, returned to the streets, okay? uh, threatening a new round of uh, instability and a contested parliamentary push uh, for national reconciliation. <coughs> On the surface, uh, while the return of the protester opposed to uh, former Prime Minister Thaksin may signal uh, a repeat to the run-up of the 2006 military coup, but the latest mo mobilization at least initially lacked crucial military support. So uh, we have heard a lot before about uh, whether there would be another military coup. Uh, but then uh, I personally do, uh, did not believe that it would, it would, would be one very soon because uh, the, 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 the impact and the, the implication would be too devastating for the military. But let's see. Uh, the toxin enemy, especially in the, in the establishment forces, which include the opposition the Democrat Party, the people, the yellow shirt people's alliance for democracy, or the PAD. Uh, if you forget who they are, they are the one who seized international airport. You know, in late 2008, uh, in November, for nine days, and then most of them have not been prosecuted. Okay, that go to show the linkage between the PAD and the, uh, those in the judicial uh, system in Thailand. Uh, so this group. Opposition Party, PAD, and also a segment of uh, the Royal Palace, they stand opposed uh, to four national reconciliation bills. Uh, they believe aim narrowly uh, to keep amnesty to and to and restore the court confiscated assets of the self exile Thaksin, who is the, the real power behind uh, his sister, Prime Minister Ying Lakshinawat, in the Pur Thai led government. So uh, Thaksin was uh, sentenced to two years imprisonment for conflict of interest and corruption, and uh, you know, he ran away. Basically, uh, the, the, his enemy came out and said that this is not right for the government to push for the reconciliation uh, bills to go through the parliament, because this would give Thaksin uh, a free pass you know, for him to come home uh, without being charged. So for them, it was unacceptable. Now, reconciliation bill. Okay. Let me talk. Uh, it's a little bit Technical, I will try to go very quickly, but I think it's important to understand what it's all about, about the re reconciliation bill. Okay, as I said, there are four different types of uh, reconciliation bills, which are the Thai media called amnesty bills. Okay, the two main ones are those proposed by uh, General Sonti Bunya Ratakin, okay, uh, former coup leader of 2006 and currently MP 
from Matupum party in the parliament. Uh, the guy on the left hand, uh, man in black, he's in the middle. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then it's also him in the middle uh, on the right hand. That was the night of 19 uh, September when he went on television and declared there was a military coup. And I hope that you notice uh, the two big portraits behind them. So uh, he's the man. Uh, General Sonti. So basically, this guy, he was a former enemy of Thaksin, suddenly become good friend of Thaksin today. As I said, anything can happen in Thai politics. Uh, so Sonti came up with a rec with proposal for reconciliation bill, two of them. And the, the other two proposed by a late red shirt leader who is also now in the cabinet. Uh, his name is Natwood Saikur, and he's uh, currently deputy uh, minister of agriculture. Uh, Nat Wood Seiger, I don't know whether you know him, but I think you, you should follow him closely. A very charis charismatic young man. Uh, someone said that he could become prime minister in the future. Uh, I, I attend his talk before, as I said, very charismatic. Ben Anderson said that he's one of the most public speakers he ever ever seen in his life. So, uh, I don't have a photo of him, but you know, he's very well known in Thailand. He himself proposed to uh, reconciliation bill. Anyhow, I'll show you uh, the, the, the content and, and what are the differences very quickly. Uh, section 1 of the, of the bill basically has the name of the act, right? Se uh, section 2 uh, states that uh, the act will come into force the day after publication in the government gazette. Section uh, 3 of General Sonti can be summarized something like this. Any act related to political uh, protest or expression of political opinion between 15 of September 2005, uh, that was only four days before the military coup, until 10 of May 2011, that was two years ago. 10 May 2011, that when the government and the security forces uh, launched a brutal crackdown on the racial protester, uh, resulting in almost 100 people being killed on the street of Bangkok. So uh, it's a period just shortly before the military coup up until May 2011. It's about six years. Uh, during those period, right, uh, political protests, uh, expression of political opinion, would, that, would, that were deemed illegal before will no longer be illegal. And the person who committed those acts will be freed from a legal responsibility for their acts. Okay, basically anyone who committed, you know, uh, any political activity, illegal, illegal activity would be free. Uh, these acts are first various acts that arouse out of a political protest or expression of a political opinion, including violation of laws, prohibiting anti-government uh, gatherings, statements or announcement, resisting the carrying out of acts of uh, government officials or other form of protest which affect other people physically or their assets that arouse of political protests or expression of political, uh, political opinion. And second, uh, various acts by government officials. See, not only uh, ordinary people, but this also cover the act uh, by the uh, government officials, including the military. Okay. Uh, so basically, the military who kill the protest can walk free too, according to this reconciliation bill. Uh, Various acts by government officials or uh, other involved in preventing or suppressing political protests, expression of political opinion, or other related acts. This is Sonti proposal. For not to wood the red shirt uh, guy's proposal, slightly different. Uh, the difference is that is, uh, the proposal excludes terrorist acts and acts that causing death. So the red shirt minister still want to, you know, the military to take responsibility for the killing of the red shirt. And that would involve some of the red shirt who also burned down. If you remember in May 2010, who burned down Central World. Uh, but that, has, that is, is, is still very controversial, such a controversial case, because we don't know who ex ex exactly uh, commit the, the arson attack uh, against uh, Central World. Anyhow, OK, uh, under Sonti version, all protesters and, and soldiers basically uh, get off but there are so many things uh, open to interpretation, such as, you know, what, what does arouse out of the political protest mean? Okay. 
Okay. And on this fact, uh, it treats everything involved with the yellow shirt and red shirt protester as not being illegal. Uh, but it is again still open to interpretation on how broadly it will be interpreted and how related to protest such act must be. So if this gonna if this gonna go through the parliament, uh, the yellow shirt who occupy the uh, government house for nine months and also at the international airport would also not be prosecuted. Uh, for the red shirt guy version, those who commit terrorist acts and acts that causing their death won't get off. This is the main difference, uh, although the wording throughout does differ slightly and this may affect uh, how broad the amnesty is for some offenses. And for the, the reference to the expression of political opinion, there's other, quest, other, other questions too. For example, does this include uh, those who have been prosecuted under Section 112, Article 112, which is Les Majestés Law, uh, whether you consider them to be uh, a political prisoner, uh, whether you know those people who have been arrested during uh, the, the period of the coup and May 2010, should they be also let, you know, let, let off, uh, get off the, 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 the charge. It's again very much uh, open to interpretation. And one uh, Pur Thai, which is a, a ruling uh, uh, party, one Pur Thai MP said that it would include those prosecuted under 112, and presumably for the reason of giving encouragement to the red shirt in jail. Most of them who have been charged for less majeste, surprisingly they are you know, a member of red shirts. And this creates an, an image or perception of the red shirt being an anti-monarchy in Thailand. Okay. Uh, that's why I think there had been an attempt on a part of, of, the gov of, of some member of the government to include political prisoners who have been charged for 112 to also be uh, uh, set free. Uh, this opened a way for the Democrat Party, opposition party, to criticize the government uh, because the party will, uh, it was a plan, it went so far to say that it was a plan to overthrow the monarchy. Uh, and the, the opposition party argued that, you know, if you arrest someone who installed the monarchy and you eventually let these people go, the, these people will do the same thing once again. And that would lead to uh, the, the decline of the monarchy. That's what, the, that what the, the, the Democrat Party has been arguing. Uh, it will also depend on who interpret uh, th this act. And in theory, you know, it could apply to uh, 112 crimes, although in, in practice it may not, or it may be limited to only uh, some less majestic cases. I don't want to go into detail because it's just too technical. Uh, section 4, uh, once this act comes in, in, into force, for any person who is uh, under investigation for acts uh, committed per Article 3, the previous article, the person who has authority to investigate shall suspend the investigation. In a case, if the case is already in the court, uh, then the prosecutor must withdraw the case. If the person has already been convicted, then the person must be deemed as never, have be, never having been convicted. So if the person is serving a penalty, then the penalty must end and the person release. release. So this also involves ongoing trial in causing those who has been uh, already uh, convicted. Section 5, any person affected by the acts of an organization appointed under orders of the Council of National Security. The Council of National Security is the governing body of the coup leader in 2006. After the coup tear down the constitution of 1997, when they staged a military coup in 2006, this coup maker, the group of, this group group of coup makers set up this governing body uh, to rule Thailand for almost two years. And it, it was under the name of Council of National Security. Okay. Uh, okay. Any person affected by the acts of an organization appointed by uh, orders of the Council of National Security or the Council Chairman, which is General Sonti, right, uh, which seized power on 19 September 2006, will not be considered suspect or wrongdoers, and the statement of Article 4, the previous article, shall apply. All related uh, organizations will treat the person affected according to the rule of law. To cut this short, basically this one is for Thaksin, because uh, this is about uh, the coup maker trying to, uh, 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 to justify 
m i c h i k u that topped elected government of Thaksin, and uh, in the aftermath, I think uh, there had there, there were attempts, many attempts of the of Thaksin enemy to try to continue to justify uh, any attack against Thaksin, including uh, uh, giving him a two-year sentence, uh, imprisonment for conflict of interest, and uh, confiscated his asset in February 2010. I mean, almost 60 percent of his personal asset disappeared. So this is kind of a compromise for Thaksin. If the if the amnesty bill uh, will go through, then Thaksin, then everyone will uh, will how to say? We imagine that the coup had never uh, taken place. So Thaksin will just come back as uh, an innocent man. Okay. Uh, two more sec section. Section six: uh, the revocation of the political rights. Of a former executive of a dissolved political party will end, and those person will will be deemed as those whose right had never been revoked. Uh, this apply to uh, the 111 Thai Lak Thai, which is uh, um, an old party of Thaksin member, right? Uh, the member of Thai Lak Thai party. Uh, even though the five year ban is over, I will explain a little bit uh, later. Uh, this section six will also wipe uh, the slate clean. As they were not banned, but also to the executive member of the People's Power Party, uh, and other party which has been banned uh, from December in 2009. Okay. Anyway, uh, after the coup, uh, then uh, Thaksin Party shortly again was disbanded. Okay, and then they came up with a, a accusation against uh, the party, and when the party was banned, all the executive member of uh, of p e r Thai Party, 111 of them, very influential, very, very powerful. Uh, you name it, you know, uh, big politician in the past, they were banned from politics for five years. In fact, they just, the ban just came to an end only in May this year. So, which means these people could return to politics any time from now, and I'm sure that they will re return any time soon. Uh, this section, section six, would treat like the ban never taken place. That never happened. These people never been uh, accused of anything, including uh, the ban of another another party, People's Power Party, in 2008. Uh, how can I say? You will not be able to kill Thaksin. Thai Rak Thai, you know, disbanded. Then the rest of Thai Rak Thai came back and formed a new party, People's Power Party (PPP). Won another election. Then they managed to ban PPP in 2008 and ban some more executive members. This section six will also cover those people under the PPP. Treat like nothing happened before. Okay, when PPP was banned, it was p e r Thai Party, which is the current party. So no matter how much you want to eliminate Thaksin, he has always uh, uh, been able to come back. Section six will just you know start off new, pretend that nothing happened. The last section was. Section seven, any uh, actions according to this act will not be considered as ending a person's right to take a civil action to seek compensation for any damages caused by uh, people whose responsibility has been lifted. This uh, principally allows uh, people who have been injured or a family of someone killed to sue for compensation. For example, any red shirt who have been injured in the March May 2010 protest. I think this the last one is kind of like a compromise. You know, uh, because I think that uh, the justice will not be given. Justice will not be given to the r e t c h e r to people who uh, who lost their life. Uh, it will no. It will never happen anyway. I don't think the government have the guts to arrest. You know, key member of the army who ordered the killing of the r e t c h e r I don't think that will ever happen, because I think the government, the current government, is more interested in building a working relationship. With the military and also the palace, so I think they 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 are aware of of this fact. Because of that, they would rather keep money rather than to fight to keep back justice. So basically, this is a compromise. Okay, out of this, this is the four bills that uh, Thaksin uh, apparently made uh, an agreement with his enemy that it will have to go through uh, the parliament at the beginning of this month, so that you know we will start again, right? And we were we were led to believe that it will go through, until there was an even letter, uh, and, and many people in Thailand call a judicial coup. 
Okay, now uh, back to what happened in the Thai Parliament when uh, the, the, they try to propose the four uh, reconciliation bill. Uh, what happened was that you know at the beginning of this month, uh, the Ying La government attempted to rush the bill's passage, but it was up, uh, upended uh, when the Democrat Party violently disrupt disrupted Parliament and the PAD, uh, the yellow shirt, and an ally multicolor uh, street protesters surrounded Parliament. Uh, to block the poor Thai politician from entering the building. I could not believe that this would happen to Thai parliament. This, this was the first time in our history. I thought that this somehow, like Taiwan or anywhere else, South Korea, when they start to throw you know, shoes and you know, this and that. But it actually happened. You know, I think they were so desperate, the, the, the Democrat Party. And you know, the, the lady on the top left, you know, she kind of pushed the, the House Speaker from the poor Thai Party. And then she basically dragged the chair away. And then the, the, uh, the poor Thai party came to rescue the chair and kind of like a tug of war like that. And everything is, is, it was air on, the, on, uh, on television. Uh, then they tried to push him off the chair. Then, you know, uh, one uh, MP from Democrat Party threw the whole pile of paper at the House of Government. One was strangled at the neck, as you see. Uh, it's so funny and it's, it's so entertaining for us. Uh, okay. <laughs> right. Uh, the, this is what happened in the parliament, right, as I explained to you, uh, something very unexpected. Then at the height of the commotion, of all this, you know, chaotic situation, uh, the, the House of, uh, the house of uh, Parliament, uh, 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 the, the Speaker of, 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 the, of the Low House has to call, uh, bring, bring the session to a close because he could not continue. And then it has to stop the, 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 the approval of the bills. Uh, then the Constitutional Court intervened, right? So uh, the Constitu Constitu Constitutional Court stepped in and it's ordered the Parliament uh, to suspend the bills. Uh, the third reading, there are three readings. The, the third reading was the final one. Uh, until uh, it could review a petition uh, challenging the legality of uh, a related charter, uh, charter chain bills. So the, the Democrat Party protests uh, against, uh, the, uh, against the bill, claiming that the bill is, is illegal and would like uh, the Constitu Constitutional Court to uh, intervene. Now, this is what I would like to emphasize. Uh, Thailand's court, uh, Constitutional Court in particular, have, pay, have played a prominent political role since a 2006 military coup. Remember, in, to, in 2008, the court forced a Prime Minister, Prime Minister Samak Suntorawet, also a toxin proxy, uh, to step down on a very absurd, 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 absurd ground that he was working as a cele celebrity chef uh, while serving in office. Basically, while he was working as a Prime Minister, he also has a cooking show on TV. And the court uh, argued that that was a conflict of interest. Because when he involved into a television, then there would be some sort of money, you know, to, to reward him. But Samak said that he did this for free. He did not charge anything. Anyhow, they managed to find out that Samak himself, uh, he went out to do some shopping, buy grocery to be used in the program. And each time the, 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 the grocery would cost him something like 20 or 30 US dollars. And he might have some few pence and cents left in his pocket. They call that was a, a case of corruption. So uh, because of that, because of this conflict of interest, <laughs> you cannot find anywhere in the world. So uh, he was forced to step down uh, by, the, by the Constitutional, Constitutional Court. But then uh, the, the PPP party nominate someone else to replace him, and he, they found a right person to do so, Som uh, Chai Wong Sawat who was Thaksin's uh, brother-in-law. So the, the elite uh, believed that they, they managed to use the court to force Samak to step down, but then they could not win Thaksin again because Thaksin keep coming back, appointing his own people into uh, the, the top position, but the court had not, uh, had not given up. Eventually the court found some you know, uh, irregularity during the, the, the election, and once again, Som Chai Wong Swat was forced to step down for the second time. So again, this is the order from the Constitutional Court, which many people see, you know, this is a part of political intervention of the court. So uh, consequently, the party has to be dissolved 
and many people perceive this as another kind of coup, uh, and they call it a judicial coup. You know, you don't need military coup, you don't need uh, tanks rolling on the street, but we can do a coup through the, the constitutional court. And the latest, latest controversial order by the court once again was viewed by Thaksin and the Pua Thai as an attempt to seize power once again. And they claimed that the court uh, violated uh, separation of power provisions uh, in the constitution and are now threatening to impeach the court night judges. So there was like a tug of war right now. Uh, many government uh, members insist that it is the attorney general, not the constitutional court, uh, who has the authority to uh, admit petition uh, submitted by the Democrat Party. And the decision of the court uh, stir a sense of resentment among uh, some types. They are now collecting signature to remove the entire member of the court uh, from their position. Now it's all set uh, the stage for, the, for potential uh, showdown. That week I was so scared that you know, uh, many people will, will, would go on the street once again uh, you know, for, for protest. And this could lead to a clashes between the pro and the anti uh, toxin uh, protest group, protest group. But but it did not happen. Uh, just over a month ago, uh, an event that marked uh, the the second year, the second anniversary of the May 2010 brutal crackdown on 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 the street of Bangkok, uh, toxin hinted he phoned in into a, a red shirt a gathering. He phoned in and he said that. Uh, he would be coming home soon, okay? And he would be coming home on his own terms. He also said that this would be the last long distance call to his, uh, to his fans. Uh, his statement led many people to believe that a deal must have been done, must have been stuck between Thaksin and his enemy. And they all seem to be, you know, uh, to, to give consent to the reconciliation bill. But somehow the deal went wrong. You know, this before, this happened before uh, the passage in the parliament. So Thaksin was quite sure at that point that uh, he already made a deal with the elite and that when he proposed this uh, bill in the parliament, there would be no problem. But as it turned out, you know, it, it fell. So something must have gone wrong. What, what had gone wrong? Okay, uh, this was, this was the, 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 the latest of the latest of Thaksin uh, appearing. Uh, I still have 10 minutes. I'd like to leave some time for Q&A, so okay. I, I don't mean to cut you off, but we are running short on Give time. Give me a few more minutes. Okay. Right. Uh, I will try to sum up then. Uh, after what happened in Parliament, uh, Thaksin was suddenly, uh, you know, very upset. You know, he thought that the deal, the deal was okay earlier. So he made another, another, another uh, 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 phone in, and this time the tone uh, was, was different. You know, previously the, the tone was a little bit uh, uh, very compromising. But he said that no, this is that's it. You know, uh, I won't. I'm gonna take a revenge if I will ever come back to Thailand. Uh, the, the opposition party and also his enemy did not play according to the parliament parliamentary rule. So uh, that was that. What when he said the last time? Uh, the the key actor here, though. Give me one more minute. Uh, we need to to look into it. I think. What about the role of the military in in in, in the current uh, crisis in Thailand? Uh, you would think that the military is a prime, en prime enemy of Thaksin, but it has been rather quiet uh, re with regard to the, the proposal, the, the, the reconciliation bill. It's because, as I said, you know, if the bill uh, gone tr ever gone through, then the military would be free from all the prosecution on, 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 on uh, the, the allegation, Where, whereas uh, the Democrat Party would be the loser in the game. You know, in fact, I don't see the future of Democrat Party. It's getting less and less popular, and it, it, it cannot turn to, uh, it, 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 cannot, it cannot appeal uh, to, to the public, and it has no good policy. Now it becomes so petty, you know, attacking government on a silly smaller thing. Uh, that's what's quite sad. I mean, the last one was the, the uh, Sonti Lim Thong Kung, who is, who is the leader of the PAD, the yellow shirt. Again, I think the yellow shirt, I find hard for them to come back on the street. Uh, as they did so powerfully uh, in 2008. Uh, I think they have lost so much of the, of the member. Lastly, this is my last slide, the monarchy. I mean, how can we talk about Thailand without referring to the monarchy? What would, what would be the role of the monarchy here? Uh, I can tell you, uh, we can talk about during the Q&A. There's a mixed signal from the palace uh, of whether how, how the palace have seen Thaksin this day. I think that uh, the, the, the last appearance of the king 
at Ayutthaya, the old capital of Thailand, only just a few weeks ago. Uh, that was the first time in public after he, was, he has been hospitalized in 2009. It kind of like a, a, a strong message that uh, the king is well and he's, would, he would go out and about once again. Uh, he met with Ying Lak in public for the first time in many months. Many people said that this is some sort of, you know, a reconciliation between the palace and the government, which, lead, could, which could lead to something, uh, uh, how to say, another kind of deal. I don't know what kind of deal, but this must have involved uh, the upcoming royal succession too. Well, I'll leave it here, and I'm happy to take uh, any question. Thank you so much. So we have microphones around. If you'd like to raise your hand, we have about 10 minutes. Uh, give us your name and where you're from for questions. I'm very happy to kick off, uh, but we'll start here. I answer. I work for Finance and a Swiss business newspaper. <clears throat> I uh, asked you before shortly when we talked there, uh, the perception of Thailand is obviously we have a, cry, a continual political crisis for 10 years now. At the same time, the Thai economy seems to do, do very well. Uh, there's even kind of the stock market is up. Uh, foreigners pour money in there uh, continuously. Uh, do you think uh, the outside world is underestimated the risks we have in Thailand? On the other hand, you said it was like a funny game there, you know, kind of the, the elites kind of, they kind of fight with each other. Uh, maybe on the street level, there's a very nasty fight, but it seems the elites in parliament kind of, they have an amusing game going on. So uh, what kind of picture is the right one? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, as we had earlier discussion, I'm not an eco economist, so I'm not give you uh, in-depth uh, analysis on what this would, what would, what this would cause to cause uh, to uh, Thai economy. But I mean, it's funny, as you said, it seems that Thai politics and economy are two are two separate things. Uh, what I can tell you that maybe a th investor who have been invested in Thailand for so long, they look looking at it at, at a long term. But I think what they have seen now is kind of an illusion, I would say. And you are right that, you know, uh, uh, on the surface, it seems like Thailand is doing okay. That, uh, you know, Thaksin, if Thaksin, if Thaksin ever come home, that can only mean one thing. It means that, as I said, the deal has been done, which means that, you know, they allow Thaksin to come back. Uh, in a way, it could be a good thing for Thailand. It means that, you know, uh, eventually Thaksin and his enemy managed to, to, you know, kiss and make up. You know, this could be good for a long-term peace for Thailand, but I don't think it's going to be that easy. It's going to, it, it, it is very much uh, very complicated, uh, uh, and I think the it would be if you want to look at uh, at long-term uh, economic uh, stability in Thailand, uh, you obviously have to look at the political stability, and I think it would be misleading for anyone to uh, to talk about taxing alone, uh, to talk about whether taxing will come back, whether you know. Uh, uh, Thaksin would become prime minister again, this and that. I think the the, the focus should should be on, uh, to be honest, on the monarchy and then on the future of, of the monarchy because the monarchy uh, has been playing a central role here, and uh, the future of Thailand, future of political stability will depend on on the king, how long he would you know stay with us, and then about the royal succession, uh, what would be the kind of a uh, transition, what would be the scenario. I have, uh, you know, almost 10 scenarios to tell you. I don't know which one it's going to be. But that would be, that would be difficult for investors to look, to look ahead. But just my word of advice, you know, uh, I mean, the focus has, should have been on, on the monarchy, not on, on, on Thaksin. And I think I'm, I, I tell you here that, uh, to me, I think Thaksin is, is fading away. Uh, you know, he still makes headlines, but I don't see him coming back as a prime minister. I, I think... Uh, Ying Lak has done so well too, you know. If there would be anyone, it would have been Ying Lak, you know. People underestimated her before, but uh, suddenly she has shown uh, some kind of leadership and, and her personal uh, character uh, that somehow, you know, win has in my other red shirt. I don't know whether I answer your question. Steve. Well, actually, I was going to ask you something else, but could I follow up on that question? I mean, it, it seems hard to imagine that somebody with... Taksin's personality and dynamism and political connections would come back to Thailand 
uh, with his sister as prime minister and wouldn't be a player. So if he is going to be a player, what happens? Mm. Well, I mean, this is Thaksin, you know. Uh, I never know him personally, but I think I know, I can read him. He's an, he's an, he's a, an easy book to read. Uh, it's, 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 it's his personal uh, stubbornness. Uh, he is now a prime minister of Thailand. You know, what he want more, you know, he, uh, even though I said that Ying Lak, uh, she has that charisma, and also she has shown her leadership, but we know that the person, the real person who pulled the string uh, behind the scene is still Thaksin. You know, if Thaksin would ever be, uh, you know, very happy and follow the, the, the king philosophy of sufficiency, <laughs> then he should be very happy uh, wherever he is right now because he still control, you know, Thai politics. You know, uh, I, I was told that uh, every, mem every uh, cabinet meeting, Thaksin is on the phone. You know, even, you know, uh, Skype him immediately and he tell, you know, you're going to be in that minister, this and that. Then why he want more? I think, I think this is more, uh, has to do with his personal thing. And uh, he's, he's very determined. Uh, and he said once, you know, uh, to, to the Thai uh, report, to, to a Thai media, he said that, you know, you, 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 can, you, can, uh, you can pull me down. When I am down, make sure you kill me. Because if you don't kill me and I can stand up, I'll kill you. So basically, he will never give up. So that's why all this year he said that, oh, I have enough of politics, you know, I don't want to go back to politics. No, it's never, it's never been true. Uh, so, uh, that goes to show that, you know, Thaksin, Thaksin will still, to a certain extent, uh, very influential. And uh, it's a shame that if he, if he would give uh, more chances for, for his sister to do the job properly, then the one, one, one of the bad thing also that because Haksin is still around and he still uh, show his his uh, eagerness to come back, he kind of uh, put everything on hold. He keep the red shirt a member and red shirt movement. He hold them hostage, you know, because with the Haksin name, the opposition party can always uh, exploit Haksin for every single thing to justify every single thing. In Thailand, we call you know they cannot they they have this kind of Haksinophobia. So they hate Thaksin so much that they keep talking about Thaksin. And whatever they talk about Thaksin, then it justifies their action. I have to go on the street today because Thaksin will be coming back, coming back. Okay, that's okay. The constitutional, constitutional court has to step in, and that is okay because this is to stop Thaksin from coming back. Everything is about Thaksin. Uh, Thaksin is still very much useful for the, for the opposition. And it's sad for the Red Shirt because I'm sure that, I mean, in, in my experience dealing with the Red Shirt members and, and movement, not a lot of them uh, are pro taxin you know they had nothing to do with taxin they are just pro democracy but because because of the the close connection between red shirt and taxin that you know kind of uh, become a uh, 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 what i say a mark for them you know people will continue to look at red shirt as to uh, a weapon of taxin which is very unfair we have time for one or two more questions I do have one. We, we spoke very briefly earlier about the rising competition, for lack of a better word, between China and the United States and Southeast Asia. So enter Thailand, which has its own somewhat uh, difficult politics. Will that have anything to do with how politics and the economy are shaped in Thailand in the coming couple of years? Yes, definitely. Uh, I, when it comes to foreign affairs, uh, Thailand has engaged so much with, with the U.S. And, and China, and it has been a, a war between U.S. and China to win over uh, Thailand, you know, uh, so that they, they can uh, gain a stronger foothold in, in, in the kingdom. Uh, I'll try to, to, to give this a uh, short answer. Relation between Thailand and the U.S. has gone a long way. You know, Thailand has been uh, one of the main uh, partner and also ally of the U.S. in Southeast Asia, you know, since the, since the Cold War. We are the we are the, the first country in the whole, in the whole Asia. We signed a, a, an agreement, a military agreement with, with the U.S. Uh, so the link has been there. But somehow, I think in, in the past year, uh, the U.S. has refused to understand uh, the, the new reality in Thailand. What I try to say is that the U.S. still have this old same perception of the monarchy sitting on the top of Thai politics. If you ally with the, mon if the, if the, with the monarchy, if you keep the monarchy happy, then your interest would be okay. But it's no longer the case. Because as we know that you know, the, the monarchy has been, uh, has been challenged 
by new actors, by t u x i n by the red shirt. So I think the U.S. still cannot adapt uh, to to the new reality, and that caused an impact on its influence in the kingdom. Uh, in the meantime, the, uh, with the with uh, the rise of China, Chinese has been more pragmatic and then has uh, has the right approach, uh, interested in Thai politics but not intervening. And uh, imagine, you know, if you notice, if you would take notice, China, the Chinese government would never say anything about Thai politics, would never criticize the military, you know, never never be never go out there and support the red shirt too openly. In the meantime, that uh, we have a Chinese ambassador, Ambassador Guan Mu, who has been in Thailand in and out, in and out for 18 years. He speaks Thai better than Thai, and <laughs> believe it or not, all 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 the all the big uh, uh, minister in Thailand has to uh, pay a courtesy call to to the to the Chinese ambassador. I mean, this smaller thing is somehow is very important for China, and I think because of that, and because of the rise of China too, becoming the one of the biggest market in the world. I'm afraid to say. I mean, Thailand is leaning toward China more and more, but not say. I'm not saying that we are walking away from the U.S. But China has offered something that the U.S. has ever offered. You know, we have a a a cobra go with the U.S. The the biggest military uh, exercise between Thailand and U.S. China started military exercise with Thailand two years ago, and China make it even better. We keep we pay for everything. You don't. We have have to even pay. Anything else? We have FTA with Thailand, uh, with China. We still cannot conclude the FTA with the U.S. I mean, there's a lot more to say. So, will that be a factor in Thai politics? Definitely. Uh, uh, I mean, there's a there's a huge uh, uh, Chinese community, business community in Thailand. And you know, if you look back, I just talked to uh, Steve. If you look back at the past uh, prime minister, four or five, all of them are Chinese. You know, uh, the current one is Chinese Ying Lah. Obviously, Chinese too. t a x in Chinese. He even went to to pay respect to his ancestor in Guangzhou. b a n h a n s i r p a a c h a c h o l i y o n g j a y u t c h o n l i k p a i Oh my God. Uh, so I mean, that, there's a link there. You know, we have a Chinese prime minister in Thailand. So I, I, with that link, uh, with uh, the potential market, I think uh, the, the the benefit uh, we become how to say uh, pull toward China more, and with with uh, the US. I, I think the U.S. still uh, play the wrong approach. What I can say is, is, is still so much on politics, but not so much on on economy. And we find it hard to break into the U.S. market too, uh, because of that. I think it will cause an impact on the overall, you know, economic tie. Thank you, p a v a n Chachap Val Pongpun. Thanks very much <laughs> Thank for coming so much. to speak to Thank us. You so much. And as usual, a small.